Yes. Hello, friends. Uh, warm welcome to each and everyone here. Uh, a wonderful evening and a happy morning. So today we are beginning our fifth week and the last four weeks has been a wonderful journey where we get to have a lot of knowledge sharing by wonderful masters. Uh, in the first week, we understood about the science of meditation. In the sex, second week, we understood a little bit about soul science, understanding about our limiting beliefs. We try to pattern our limiting beliefs, our experiences, our emotions. And in third week, we understood what are relationships and how one should see relationships and understand relationships and maintain those relationships. And fourth week, we saw human body and the existence of human life in a different perspective, to the perspective of panchakochas. But, and also we understood about chakras, the meridians, the energy systems that is running all through our body that is giving us that life force. So this fifth week, we are going to talk about what is health and illness and how are we going to manage health. So we'll understand a little bit of quantum model of human being and how it helps in combining with meditation to give us health. So today we'll see what is health and what is ill health or illness. And we'll journey through the lanes of medical sciences today. So to begin with, every one of us wants health, right? Everyone wants to be healthy. And we all know that there is only one health, but many diseases. So what is health? And what are those criteria that determine us being healthy? So I'll share my PPT. So what is health? There is a beautiful definition that WHO has given for us to understand health. And uh, One second. Yeah, I hope you can see. Yeah. So WHO defines health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and just not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. This means that just because you don't have any physical disease does not mean that you are healthy. There should be a balance in your physical health, in your mental well-being, as well as your social interaction and your social well-being. So if there is a balance in all these three categories, then you are supposed to be healthy according to WHO. Now, when we understand if there is any imbalance in these three categories, whether it's your physical, mental, or social well-being, then you fall into the opposite side of the criteria, that is you are ill health or you are having some kind of illness. Now, this concept of illness has evolved over a period of time. Because in the past, Illness was defined as if, if you are having any kind of microbial or bacterial infection or something like that, then you are supposed to be having disease or you are supposed to be called as ill health. Now, there is no contribution towards medical and social well-being in understanding health in that point of time. And illness nowadays is defined as a system where the body puts it itself so that it goes back to, goes back to the state of homeostasis. Now, in ancient times, feeling ill, this understanding or this feeling of called as ill is concerned around the individual. It is very, it was very, very subjective to the individual on how a person is feeling, how he or she is using their innate healing abilities to come out of the illness. But today, a state of illness is diagnosed by a physician by an objective criteria. That is, it is very quantitative. It depends upon the values, your laboratory tests, and all the observations that are made from the point of view of a physician or a doctor. And that determines whether you're healthy or ill or not. So therefore, the concept of illness can be seen from many, many different perspectives. So now let us go through one aspect of the history lane on how medical sciences has evolved through last three centuries and how that has affected us, all of us in viewing our health. Now this discovery of penicillin by Alexander Fleming 
had a great impact on the philosophy of medicine. We can say the medicine, medical sciences before the discovery of penicillin and after the discovery of penicillin. Because there was a rampant death due to bacterial infection before penicillin was discovered. It is basically an antibiotic. Especially conditions like pneumonia, TB, which had a mortal, mortality rate of about 50%. And it used to kill almost 1 lakh American people every day and at least 10 times more worldwide. So after the advent or the discovery of penicillin, medical sciences were more confined or more narrowed towards building up these chemical compounds. And the market was flooded with these antibiotics or the chemical compounds. And medicine, over a period of time, medical practice or the medical sciences over a period of time became somewhat like an omnipotent, a godlike structure that has promised a pain-free society. Now, the medicine before the advent of chemical compounds was more like a masterpiece. It was an art, a cure that resulted from a patient's will combined with the physician's intuition and skill in using remedies that culled from millennia of observant trial and error. Now, over last two centuries, this narrowed view of medicine towards looking or healing the body with the use of chemical compounds has made medicine more and more towards a particular branch of science that is dealing with mainly biochemistry, that is application of chemistry to the study of biology. And later when the DNA code and all this decipherment of the DNA, the genes and everything were being uh, discovered, it created and it empowered that belief that human body is nothing but a complex chemical reaction and all the diseases are controlled by our genes. And slowly medical science has failed in its attempt to understand the soul, a vital spark, a subtle something that brings the life force to the living matter. And thereafter, towards the furthermore journey, drugs became the best and the only valid treatment of all ailments. The aspect of prevention, importance of nutrition, physical activity, exercise, lifestyle, the patient's physical and mental uniqueness, the environment that we are surrounded, in, surrounded by, all these criteria, all these categories were brushed under the carpet. Now, we need to understand that medicine does miracles. There is a tribute that it can give because there were the level of decline of bacterial and pneumococcal infections and especially the infectious disease, death because of infectious disease has given a great uh, relief to the doctors and the society in general. And the advent of these technological fixes like artificial heart walls or the stainless steel hip joints that is giving hope to many people who are suffering from these, these long-term illnesses. Medicine does miracles when it comes to conditions like trauma, accidents, injuries, acute conditions. But these conditions are only 10% of all the illnesses put together. The rest 90% are all chronic illnesses, which are not being addressed by Western medicine in a proper way till date. And the problem here is that these technological fixes became overrated. And the ability of the body to heal itself, that healing capacity of the body is downregulated. How much ever technological fix you do, how much ever medication you take, it eventually depends upon your healing ability of the body to go through that healing process. These are only the external parameters. So that healing power or that vital force inside the human body is being downregulated over a period of time. Now, we are now about three centuries into a mindset in medicine, which is based on the Newtonian and Darwinian idea that our body is a chemical-based machine. And if there is anything wrong with it, replace the parts with a surgery or lubricate the parts with chemical compounds like medication and drugs. And there is no aspect or involvement of body's own 
self healing vital force and we really don't have any purposeful existence we just came into existence by some random mutation and we are just here to live survive and die now over a period of time we need to understand that this type of mentality was existing with the medical sciences we in the medical school were never taught that you know body has that ability to heal itself it was always about pharmacy or understanding the parts of the human body so if a human is merely a chemical machine then the ultimate human is a robot and we are undermining this patient's own self healing force and over a period of time now the infectious diseases all these bacterial and viral infections have been decreasing unless recently the covid came into action but once there was a decline in this infectious diseases we need we are seeing that there is an increase in the levels of degenerative diseases these are chronic diseases such as cancer hypertension diabetes arthritis ulcers heart attacks all these are rampant in the society right now and medicine has become like a double edged sword the failure of this technological chemical based medicine is due paradoxical to its success because it swept away all the aspects of medicine as an art art of working with human body through the aspect of mind body and soul and the immune power the body possesses to heal itself now there is this gentleman here as you can see here please ignore the cigar in his fingers so this gentleman's name is albert zen gairoi this man is a nobel laureate he won nobel prize and he discovered vitamin c so he gives us how a perspective of his and how medical science is looking at human life he says that medical science that we know life only by its symptoms and we understand virtually nothing about the basic functions of the human body whether be it's how a pain is activated or the processing of the pain how understanding about the cell growth differentiation the process of wound healing the mechanism of sleep and he says that we are ignorant of every uh, nearly every aspect of consciousness that defines us which makes this living material or this living organism to respond to the aspects of instinct how are we making a choice what is this memory how are we learning the process and ability of learning the aspect of individuality creativity and he says that we are losing that aspect of understanding consciousness with respect to the human body and he also says that we don't understand how an organism regulates its metabolic activities in cycles attuned to the fluctuations of earth moon and sun why are the emotions high on the full moon days what happens to the physical body what is the process the problem he also says that medical science don't know when to pull the plug we are not even sure how to diagnose death properly and the mechanistic chemistry isn't adequate to understand the enigmas of life this is what is beautifully told in his one of his uh, books and the advent of dna and the discovery of dna has also made a drastic brought about a drastic ripple effect not only in the medical sciences but also in our day to day lives in the society also 70 years back these two gentlemen watson and crick they decoded the genetic codes of the dna and out of this came the new word called genetic determinism now here you can see there is a dna rna and a protein here you need to focus on the emphasis is here on the protein because we talk regularly in our day to day language that protein is very important you need to have protein why because protein is the building block of the human body each and every cell of your in your human body the for the structure of the cell and the activities inside the cell proteins are required proteins help in the production transportation of your body hormones 
they help in the assimilation and the breakage of your food proteins are required everywhere and they play a vital role in your human body so that's why protein are the driving or the building force of the human body and this protein is produced by the rna by taking the genetic code from the dna so dna was considered like the central dogma the god the almighty uh, father because now medical sciences have understood like how this whole human being came into existence and they can now become like they can create all the methods that can create uh, a make human uh, being disease free we are going to live for ever we are going to be like the mortal beings immortal beings so now what happened and they said that you know dna was considered to be the central dogma and every disease that hap that comes into your physical body is because of that genes or the dna now this genetic determinism came into play which said that every disease is hereditary and if there are certain genes in your dna then you are supposed to get that disease and this hereditary genetic determinism was playing not only in the society but it also went rampant into every day every person's life because everyone started to see themselves with this aspect so this all boils down to one point that your dna is the master and you are its slave and this sub sublime idea over a period of time became the mainstream idea and people everyone everywhere started accepting this idea of genetic determinism now we need to understand here is that if the genes or the dna are controlling our biology what is making that genes do that from this idea or from this perspective and recently a couple of decades back a new branch of science sprouted out called epigenetics which says that our genes don't control our biology but it is the environment that we are in the field that is surrounding us controls our genes we have the ability to control the field around us now as you can see here in the left side the picture you see a normal cell and you see a cancerous cell the normal cell inside the nucleus the dna is being magnified in both the uh, cells here you can see that all you need to understand here is that all the people in this world have a probability of having cancer cells in their life but what is preventing them from not having cancer cell and why are only few people having cancer because there are certain genes in our dna called as tumor suppressor genes and when they are switched on they prevent the cell to convert into a cancer cell they prevent that normal cell from being converted into a cancer cell and when this tumor suppressor gene is switched off then the cell becomes cancer cell now what is making this cell that tumor that tumor suppressor gene to switch on and switch off it is the environment that is influencing it the environment here is two types the environment around your cell inside the body and the environment outside the body inside your body your thoughts your emotions your stress levels all play an important role all will trigger this genes to either switch on or switch off and outside your body the physical activity the food you eat the things you hear the uh, uh, news or something uh, things that you watch everything will matter everything will influence the external environment will always influence your internal environment and that environment will make certain genes to switch on and switch off and that's how you manifest disease in your life so everything determines the state of your well being all the internal and external environment so finally it's not the genes but the environment and the field around us that determines our health now let's understand or see how do we see human body do you see human body just by your skin or you have this internal organs you have eyes ears is this just the human body no because we need to see human body in a different perspective human body is a bustling community of more than 50 trillion individual cells that are living in harmony that are living in cooperation human body human being itself is a living example 
of cooperation, unity, and oneness. And we need to start calling ourselves or describing ourselves from I towards we. Because out of these 50 trillion or 70 trillion individual cells, 90% of them are bacterial cells. Only 10% are human cells. And these bacteria is all over your body. There are millions of them on your skin, on your nasal cavity, inside your nose, inside your mouth, inside your ears. And a bunch, a majority of them are sitting in your gut that is determining your well-being. So we can also say that microbium is the CEO of the human body. Now let's understand about this brain, gut and microbiome connection because these play a very important role on how we are manifesting health and illness in our life. This human gut, especially the large intestine of yours, is an amazing piece of work. And it's often related to a second brain because it has got its own independent nervous system. About 100 million neurons are embedded in your gut wall. And each of this cluster of bacteria have their own genes and they produce their own metab metabolic uh, metabolites that are released into the blood, own molecules, you can say, that are released into the blood. And almost one fourth to one third, about one third to one fourth of all the molecules or the metabolites in your blood are created by the bacteria. And the bacteria also provides us ecological services. They digest our food. They synthesize all the vitamins that are essential for us. And whenever you take these pharmaceutical drugs, they break down them, they assimilate the process, and they release the drug into the blood. All this is done by the bacteria. These gut bacteria regulate your digestion, your metabolism. They program the body's immune system. And bacteria in the gut blocks harmful microbes or the external outside pathogens to, to affect you. They create that defense force for you. They produce hundred, hundreds of neurochemicals that brain can use to regulate the basic physiological process that, is, that are used by the brain to make its uh, regular physiological processes to happen. Neurotransmitters such as serotonin. This serotonin is because of this neurotransmitter, you feel good, you feel calm, you feel focused. It is produced by your gut bacteria. The neurotransmitters like dopamine, which helps you in increasing your productivity towards your work, which gives you motivation, which helps you to focus on things, is produced by your gut bacteria. Many amino acids like tryptophan, this amino acid is produced by your gut bacteria, which helps in regulating your sleep cycle. So gut bacteria is affected by our thoughts and emotions also, and it's vice versa. Our thoughts and emotions affect the gut bacteria. And if you are having a bad stomach, then your gut thoughts and emotions, um, this bad stomach will, in, in, what do you say, will create bad thoughts and emotions. So it's like, on like a loop cycle. So if you are happy or you are sad, it's not just going in your brain, but it is this collective ecosystem that is also getting affected in that process. Now, researchers, research studies have shown that if we move away from meat-based, that is animal-based diet towards vegan diet, then there is a drastic shift in the ecology of the bacteria in the gut. The whole bacterial culture that is in your gut, it's gonna thrive. It's gonna have a better, better uh, production of all the activities, all the metabolites, everything. It's gonna be in a very thriving state. So in turn, that will affect all your organs of your body. And we should be very careful of the type of food that we eat, the GMO food, the gluten food, the fast food, everything is gonna affect your, bad, your gut bacteria. And that in turn will go and affect your moods, your thoughts, emotions, and your whole well-being. So our diet, our thoughts, our emotions, our social interactions, our personal relationships, et cetera, everything is gonna affect your gut bacteria. 
if your microbiome is not happy then you are not happy so take extreme care of them to be happy and human being is a living breathing magnificent organism and each cell of the human body has its own life force has its own consciousness that is always at play and we are a culmination of all those cells put together working in harmony now as you can see here in the graphs this was a particular data that was connected on what are the most common causes of death in the year 1900 and as you can see here as i have told before it was mainly infectious diseases like pneumonia tuberculosis diarrhea something like that now in the year 2014 when the same data was collected the mortality rate here is due to heart, chronic diseases like heart circulatory disorders cancer respiratory disorders nervous system disorders digestive system disorders so now what is causing this chronic disease so whenever we go to doctor's office they say change your lifestyle so these chronic diseases are lifestyle induced diseases whether it's your heart disease your diabetes your thyroid your pcods and various forms of cancer and it is found that 6 in 10 adults in us have chronic diseases and 4 out of 10 have one or two chronic diseases at a time in their physical body so now what is causing this chronic diseases it is stress now this stress that is resulting in fatigue anxiety and depression stress is the major factor here so it has been derived a data was collected that people who are under stress who are feeling fatigue there are at least 76% people who feel tired at work due to this fatigue induced by stress 17% of accident road traffic accidents are because of this fatigue 40% of them are having trouble in remembering things 55% are having trouble in focusing they feel very less productive and when it comes to anxiety 44 million cases are reported in usa just because of anxiety there are at least 44 million people in usa as of year 2013 and 350 million people worldwide suffer from depression at least 5% of world population are suffering from depression and women are major gender that is suffering from de depression when comparative to men so when you break down stress we'll try to understand what stress does to the physical body so stresses can be of three types physical chemical and emotional stresses physical is some kind of a stress that you get when you go through a road traffic accident or some kind of a injury or anything that is related to trauma that will induce stress so you can consider that to be physical stress now there is a chemical stress which is caused due to bacterial viral infection your blood sugar levels your toxin levels in the food and everything all these contribute towards chemical stresses excessive intake of drugs all these things now there are emotional stress which results in relationship issues fear anger parenting issues all these things so when there is a stress it breaks your body and mind out of balance there is no harmony with your body with respect to your mind because stress is always related to an aspect of danger or a threat from the external environment and this human organism we immediately when we feel there is a stress or a fear or a threat stress in respect to fear or a threat we immediately activate our primary nervous system called as fight and flight nervous system you can see here in the right side there is it is also called as sympathetic nervous system so when you are activating this particular flight and fight nervous system all the energy resources are diverted towards your extremities the body pushes all its energy to adapt to the stress in the environment and all the internal organs are shut down so that you get ready to either run to either fight or to hide now this stress in the process of stress we tap to the body's vital resources to survive the condition in the outer world so stress usually creates a rush of this stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol a rush of this energy happens in your body 
and it's very important to understand that all living organisms can sustain stress only for a shorter time period of time our bodies evolved or adapted to that sort of stresses only and after the stressor is removed then the body comes back to a state of homeostasis because the body needs rest to regenerate to regrowth all these are very very important for the body now suppose for an example consider that you are in a jungle and uh, you lost in a jungle and suddenly a tiger or some kind of a lion comes up and uh, you keep running out of it because it tries to attack you then after some time it goes away then this flight and flight hormone turns on and then it switches back and now you take you you take deep breaths and you try to relax at that point of time now suppose that you accidentally went into a cave and the tiger and the lion is waiting outside the cave imagine the stress you go through the stress response is extended here now remove the tiger or a lion and put your boss put your coworker put your mother in law or anyone this prolonged stress response when it gets extended you can't turn it off because no organism can live in emergency mode for an extended period of time so when you are continuously pushing energy and draining energy some kind of a threat in the outer world that is making you to do that you are left with no more energy and your growth and repair in the inner world it stopped so if you are living in a constant state of stress just like any other chemical addict just like you are having smoking or alcohol that similar type of addiction happens to your body and you want to have that rush of adrenaline and cortisol to get to your day to day work also done because you get adapted to it and it is scientifically proven fact that long term effects of stress hormones pushes or switch on switch, uh, switches on your genetic buttons that will result in diseases so we can turn on the stress response just by a thought alone that is why 90% of all our diseases are psychosomatic here i have written something that you know when they do organ transplant if a patient a's organ is given to patient b then they are usually they usually give stress hormones so that the patient b who is re receiving that organ the immune system of the patient b is completely knocked off so that when a foreign organ is transplanted the body does not react to it so stress hormones are officially used in surgical processes like transplantation because it completely knocks down the immune system so imagine the day in and day out if you are living in stress you will manifest diseases in your life because your immune system is completely knocked out and major of majority of the diseases are created in the body by the suppression of your immune system whether it's your cancer your arthritis your food allergies your food sensitivities everything are created by them so the researchers have shown that just by shifting your emotional status that is your survival emotions of your fear and anger towards your creative <clears throat> emotions like elevated emotions just by shifting those emotions itself having that positive thoughts and elevated emotions reduce the stress hormones drastically so it's very very important that we have to look at our thoughts and emotions and especially curb this stress because stress knocks out our immune system and it will manifest in all kinds of chronic diseases now towards the end we'll try to understand a little bit of how quantum physics has helped us to understand human body so here when you see this baby here especially the stomach part of the baby when you see that you know when the baby's stomach is open uh, is is opened then there is a stomach and the stomach is further magnified you see there are muscle layers and when that muscle layers are further magnified under a microscope about uh, 40 times powerful microscope you see that there are nothing but cells that are put together they are cluster of individual cells and if you further keep zooming it some 8 lakh 50000 times then you will looking at molecules and all these molecules when you further zoom it about 1 million 
power of one millionth power of a magnifying glass, magnifying electron microscope than you see at the level of atoms. And about, and now if you look inside the atom, there is nothing. There is pretty much empty, just some small infinitesimally tiny energies that are zipping around at the speed of light. Atom is 99.9999% empty. And all the particles are waves of energy, literally vibration, literally waves of energy that are vibrating at a particular frequency. And we are, it proves that the quantum physics has given us an understanding that, you know, we are not just a matter, but we are these energy beings. At the molecular level, at the quantum level, we are just this uh, minuscule of energies that are vibrating at a particular frequency. So just like everything, we are surrounded by energy, pure energy, whether it's your sun, moon, your chair, your mobile, your laptop, everything is energy because everything is curved down to the level of atoms. So similarly, every thought is pure energy and it can be measured electronically. And our emotions are also pure energy. So when your emotions, because both these em emotions and thoughts can be measured and there is a particular frequency that can be given to them. And every emotion has its own unique frequency. And we all experience these emotions all the time. But I want you to understand something that most of the time we are able to deal with the emotions. But sometimes the emotions are too intense. Sometimes the emotions are like sorrow, frustration, depression, anger, guilt. They become just too intense and too powerful for us to deal with. So at that times, the energy of this emotion can actually get strapped into your physical body. And this emotional energy that is left behind creates a trap of emotion or a ball of energy that is trapped inside your body, which is called as trapped emotion. And that will eventually manifest in a disease. So it is told that there are 90% probability that all the physical pain is due to our trapped emotions. So it's very, very important that our thoughts and our emotions are also responsible and are basically responsible for creating um, all kinds of diseases in our body because 90% of all the diseases are psychosomatic. Now, quantum physics gives us a beautiful understanding that we human body are not just dense matter, but we are energy, wisdom, and consciousness units. And we are not just this dense physical matter, but we are this vibrational unit of energy which with multi layers and multiple dimensions that are interacting with each other. And towards the end, the chronic illnesses that we are having right now, Western medicine has not given any kind of solution to it. So people are using as Western medicine, but they are divulging out towards the alternative medicine so that they can bring, come out of it so that they can have that uh, healing process happen in a proper way. Because these alternative medicines are using mind, body, and soul balance. There is a balance in the physical body, energy, body, and also your mind and emotional body. So all when all these things are balanced, then the harmony comes into your physical being. So towards the end, I just wanted to play this little video. During your life, it will be 300 million times. Each day, you take 3,000 breaths. Your blood travels 60,000 miles per day on its journey through your body. 25 million cells are being produced in your body every second. You blink at least 15,000 times today. The miracle is you. Your brain has about 100 billion nerve cells. If all your DNA was stretched out, it would reach the moon 6,000 times. You shed 600,000 particles of skin each hour. Your bones are four times stronger than concrete. Your eyes can distinguish up to one million color surfaces and take in more information than the largest telescope in the world. Your lungs inhale 
over 2 million liters of air daily. The miracle is you. When you touch anything, a message is sent to your brain at 124 miles per hour. Your skin consists of up to 280,000 heat receptors. The length of your blood vessels would circle the globe two and a half times. You have the ability to distinguish up to 10,000 different groups. And your tongue has over 10,000 taste buds. The miracle is you. The miracle is you. The miracle is you. To the music. Listen. Thank you so much. As I said, human being is a living, breathing, magnific magnificent organism. And we all have that vital healing energy force inside us that can heal anything. And we just need to tune it towards it. So thank you so much. We'll have Q&A after uh, the meditation. So I'll take you through the guided meditation. So today we'll have some affirmations towards health and uh, bringing the aspect of good health into our body. And uh, so please relax and uh, we'll start the affirmation. Thank you. One second, just relax everyone. We'll start the meditation. Sit in your most comfortable position. Drink some water. Set yourself right. Please relax your body. Relax your divine physical body because relaxation takes your physical body towards the state of creation, the state of homeostasis. that will allow all the automatic functions to go back to working 100% effectively. This is your time. This is your time for healing, for cleansing, and to bring the change. Love yourself. Love yourself mentally, physically, because you are worth it.
take few deep breaths and release all the tension difficulty stiffness from each and every part of your physical body now take a deep breath and breathe out through your eyes try to breathe out through your eyes release the tension from your eyes take one more deep breath and release all the tension from your ears take one more deep breath and release all the tensions from your cheeks breathe in and release the tension from your neck breathe in and release the tension from your chest breathe in and release the tension from your arms breathe in and release the tension from your hands breathe in and release the tension from your abdomen scan your abdomen wherever you feel tensed wherever you feel irritated just release breathe in and release the tension from your hips is a lot of discomfort that we all have in our hip region there are a lot of stagnant energy there release it breathe in and release the tension in your pelvic region breathe in and release the tension from your knees breathe in and release the tension from your legs breathe in and relax your feet breathe in and relax your upper back breathe in and relax your lower back now take a deep breath and scan each and every part of your physical body and release the tension wherever you feel it relax that part take one more deep breath and relax it take one more deep breath and relax it now in these few moments let us turn our attention in building a positive new thought 
a positive new thought pattern that will enable us to create health and well-being in our bodies our internal dialogue our mental picture have a definitive effect on our bodies so now let us use that for our best advantage you don't have to do anything there is an intelligence within you that breathes the body for you and this intelligence is the part of the one intelligence that created this entire planet that's created this entire universe you are not lost you are not lonely you are not forgotten you are not rejected you are not left outside the door you are one with the very power that created you and this power is going to give you the power to create your own experiences let us all speak these affirmations for ourselves in our mind i deserve to be healthy i have remarkably healing abilities inside my body every day is a healthy day i listen to my body my body knows what it needs healing energies runs through me all the time i am able to enjoy perfect health my body is always healing every condition the cells are always working for my greatest health inside me the love that i feel heals every part of me
every cell in my body is healthy I am happy, healthy and whole. My cells, my mind and my body are very strong. I am grateful for my healing. I choose happiness instead of pain. In every single moment, my body is healing. In all ways, now I am free from illness. I am healthy, youthful and full of energy. Now masters, sink in your mind, body and soul with these beautiful affirmations and manifest your reality. Be with your breath and enjoy your meditation.
Six masters, please bring back your awareness to your physical body. Slowly, smoothly, and comfortably, please feel your physical body. Feel the surroundings of your room. Feel the floor that you're sitting on. Bring back to your awareness, to your physical body. Now, masters, let's express gratitude because gratitude is the highest elevated emotion that can we bring into our life. Gratitude sends signal to the universe that we are vibrating in abundance. Express your gratitude to this time where you could sit and do meditation. Express your gratitude to your divine physical body. Hug your body and say, I love you, my body, and thank you so much. I'm grateful for you. Express gratitude to the breath that flows in and out of your body that is giving you the vital force energy. Express your gratitude to each and every cell of your human body. Remember, we are 90% bacterial cells. So express your love and gratitude to that good bacteria on, the, on your physical body that are working for you. Express your gratitude to your parents, to your mother, to your father, wherever they are. Just express your gratitude and say, I love you mom, I love you dad. Express your gratitude to your husband, to your wife, say I love you. Express your gratitude to your siblings, say I love you. Express your gratitude to your family, to your friends, to your neighbors. Express your gratitude to Mother Nature. to the rocks, to the stones, to the mountains, to the trees, to the birds, to the animals. Express your gratitude to your sun, it's brightening on, that is smiling onto us every day. Express your gratitude to the full moon The warmth of that full moon. Express your gratitude to the moon. Express your gratitude to each and every object that you use every day. To your phone, to your computer, to the technology that is connecting us. Feel the vibration. Be in that elevated emotion because you are worth it. You are loved. Express your gratitude to your masters, to the knowledge, to the books. Express your gratitude to your colleagues, to your office, to the work that you have right now. Express your gratitude to the vital energy, to the divine force that is sending us love every day. Express your gratitude. Now slowly, whenever you are ready, 
Rub your fingers, rub your palms and put your palms onto your eyes and open your eyes slowly, smoothly with a huge smile on your face. Welcome to the world. Thank you, Masters. Yes, masters, yeah. Mata, I yes, cannot master. do anything more than this, okay? <laughs> Thank yes, you, Robert, ma'am. So Thank you, Beautiful sir. session, and you unpacked a lot of stuff within half an hour and wonderfully done. Yeah. Covered a lot of topics, uh, quantum physics, epigenetics, and uh, gut health, and so many things. So this is like, are you planning to dive deep into each of these topics later or uh, this just introduction, you know, just laying the uh, land out there for everybody to feel it? Because uh, in a previous sessions, Gauros have covered several sessions to cover what you have done in this. But it's beautifully presented. Um, looking forward to more uh, deep dive discussions on this. Yes, yes. Thank you. Sure, sir. <laughs> so time has been a constraint. So going forward, we'll try to um, see how we can bring in on each topic. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, Master. Yeah. Ms. Masters, please do share your experience or any doubts or anything that you have, please do come forward. Yeah. Yes, Ashish, sir, yeah. Uh, well, absolutely wonderful. Uh, yeah, wonderful session, really enjoyed. And the first time, uh, <clears throat> Uh, you know, biology and human body, you know, was taught something like this. So, really amazing. Uh, so, I had uh, one question, you know, when you showed the diagrams of uh, the emotions, you know, the fear, the, I mean, you, they were human body diagrams and color combinations in between, like red, yellow, and all of that. So, in happiness state, you had shown all red. and neutral state, you had shown black so and happiness state that red that the same red was there even when there was uh, anger also so just wanted to understand uh, that red or is it just some colors or some logic yeah, it's, it's, it, they are just colors so don't focus on that they're just colors okay just to, yeah because just to give a differentiation yeah all right okay yeah. thank you thank you very much and a wonderful meditation really enjoyed Thank you, sir. Thank you. And one one small thing, uh, based on what we spoke yesterday. So last night, uh, you know, uh, yeah. I did a little very brief, like maybe a one minute meditation or so. Not even meditation, one minute closing my eyes before sleeping. And today morning, uh, you know, things were, uh, you know, far more, I mean, I was... I actually was very, getting very good thoughts about my work, you know, very constructive ideas on my work. So there was a difference that I saw uh, today morning compared to daily uh, morning. So thank you very Beautiful. much. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. It's Naina, ma'am. Just one second. Yeah, yes, sir. Parmeshran, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Just to supplement Ashish. Uh, 
question. Every color has emotion actually. Every color is attached to some emotion that is there. See, the dress you wear, you can see. That shows your own emotions. See, I always wear plain. Today we all wear the so-called formal checks and all that. What is formal in that? I really don't understand. <laughs> checks means crooked actually, my understanding earlier days. Okay. Earlier days, when I go to office, I also used to wear plain. Some I liked that stuff, not knowing yoga or <laughs> divinity and all that. Just like that got attracted, plain. So each color again, you know, yellow, green, all soothing, blue, whereas red is vibrant. So blood color, you know, like that. So each has got, so some relevance is there, what you wear is there. But uh, of course the graph and all that, we should not see. Sometimes it may be related, some may, may not be. So don't give too much attention to that. But real life, you can see the colors. When you see the hibiscus flower, and when you see the rose, you see the feeling separately. Rose is different soothing, you know, that's why your Ajna chakra color. Whereas the red muladhara, so you become more physically active when you see more and more red color. Even uh, those who see blood for a long time, you may even faint energy suddenly like that, you know. So it has connections with our emotions. And only three are primary colors actually. <laughs> red, yellow and blue. So red is vibrant and uh, yellow is medium, blue is cooling. All other colors are combinations actually, right? I don't want to take more time, other people are there too. <laughs> Talk. Thank, you for, thank you for the information. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I know, nice ma'am. Hello, lovely ma'am. Hello, all the masters. What can I, exp uh, you know, uh, how can I express my gratitude? I don't know to you today. Very beautifully presented, lovely ma'am. You know, uh, you're such an ang, uh, you know, ang person, but you, ha you have, uh, you know, shown that uh, capability in you enormously. And all of us, uh, you know, uh, get inspired by you, watching you, your smile, your, you know, uh, your activeness, and that humbleness, you know, being a doctor, be knowing all these things, explaining to uh, so many age groups, but yet there is that, you know, uh, uh, what you say, um, humbleness in you. Uh, love you so much and bless you from the bottom of my heart for all the knowledge you are transferring to us. Thank you so much. Today also being a biology student, uh, I too learned so much and uh, it'll always stay with me. Thank you so much. No words and uh, gratitude for the beautiful meditation too. Thank you. And thank you, spiritual tablets, Ashok sir. Chandra sir, whoever is you know at the back of all this, thank you, Parmeshwan sir. Kitana acha hai apka smile, you know it makes her day. <laughs> uh, you know there is a kya bolte hain when the kid smiles, uh, we experience that uh, um, unconditional love. It is the same thing, you know, when I see you smile and explain, <laughs> it is that attractive and, you know, it, it just um, cools us down immediately. Thank you so much. Thank you, Naina, ma'am. Love you, love you. Yes, Manisha, ma'am. Namaskar. Every person of this group, daily I'm learning um, anything. And now today also I am moving ahead one step forward. Now I realized today, how was I before? I was uh, surviving in a survival emotion. Now I realized today, now presently I am in the elevated mood. So uh, thank you daily, I am learning. So many things are surprising. Uh, thanks to universe, everyone, I'm getting there. I'm very lucky uh, to grab this opportunity. Thank you, Ravarian. Today's presentation was uh, marvelous. Thank you. Thank you for daily presentation, everyone. everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Manisha. Ma'am. Lots of love. Thank you. We want you to smile always. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Lakshmi, ma'am, can you unmute yourself? Yeah, so... Again, this was a wonderful, wonderful session. You connected so many things. 
really made sense. So thank you very much for the, for the information that you're providing. And of course, to Ashok sir and everybody else who is hosting, who are hosting and managing all of this. We totally appreciate it. My mother and I enjoy it a lot. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Lucky. That, that's thank it. You. Mm, sir. Sir, muted. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, you ma'am, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, started from WHO defini definition to quantum physics. Uh, uh, I hope uh, you, you elaborate further on the subsequent classes. And thank you very yes, much. Sir. Microbiome, uh, uh, it was highlighted that microbiome is only bacteria, but microbiome consists of fungus and uh, fungi and virus also, right? Yeah, but we are talking about microbiome, that good bacteria that we hold. We don't hold good viruses. We have only microbiome respective to bacteria. Well, but as a, as a definition, it is combination of all three, right? No, sir. I would say bacteria only. Anyway, just check once again. Uh, but yeah, I, yeah understand sure. the, I understand the context because you want to highlight gut, <clears throat> gut and uh, how it... Uh, our emotions and thoughts uh, uh, affects yes. the good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. I would like to say a coincidence today. Okay. So this evening, after I just finished my work, I just uh, having a chit chat with my wife. And all of a sudden, I don't know why, I just uh, had a debate with her because we are going through uh, some kind of uh, functional medicine as well as uh, what we are going through this uh, spiritual path. So in the functional medicine, they identify the root cause of your issues and mainly that it is going to the gut and how the gut is going to have the leaks and how your uh, bad bacteria and good bacteria is going to be created and fight against your things and all that stuff. And then they actually go through a lot of uh, these uh, fundamental tests to identify what is the kind of food that is going to be allergic to you and what kind of food that you can eat, what kind of food that you can eliminate and all that stuff by spending so much of your money and then going through that. But coming into the spirituality without even spending a dollar, then, but this is a, a very... Uh, uh, you know, disciplined way that you are going to uh, practice and you are going to eliminate. Mm -hmm. And the same thing. But uh, uh, today, when I have that debate and I have a question, but that question has been beautifully answered uh, when uh, Rowdy actually uh, mentioned the gut and then I was literally shocked. Okay. <laughs> I don't even have, I have not seen her presentation actually. I don't know what she's been talking today. And I, uh, for some reason, actually, I had that. And I wanted to have this question clarified with, uh, and my wife said that, no, go directly to Dr. G. Kesar and ask that question. So, but I don't need to. So thank you, Ravali. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, we are always connected. The telepathic communication happens, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I want to thank Chandra, sir, because last moment yesterday I woke up, sir, and I went through the <laughs> presentation. So thank you, sir. Thank you, Chandra, sir, for that. He's always there with me. Yes, Jagruti, ma'am. Very fine morning to all of you. Uh, I want to share my one experience. Uh, as someone said just now, that uh, viruses are viruses and fungi also uh, friendly with us. Now, uh, just a few days back, uh, I had a sore throat, low-grade fever and uh, some more uh, symptoms of uh, COVID-19. And uh, I had uh, learned a few days back that uh, if we uh, express our feeling towards anything, any person, anything, that he or she or it is our well-wisher, then uh, the harmful effects because uh, of that thing or that person, it vanishes. Now, uh, that day morning, uh, since I had uh, woken up, uh, I had I experienced a sore throat fever, body ache, and all such uh, symptoms of COVID. And I just uh, tried uh, to apply this uh, formula that everything is uh, 
my uh, well wisher and everything comes toward uh, we experience everything as a lesson to learn and the full day till evening i uh, i affirmed that uh, everything every virus every everything all bacteria virus fungi they all are well wishers they all are my well wishers and well wishers don't harm each other and to my surprise uh, um, uh, in the evening up, uh, around 5 o'clock my sore throat my body ache my low uh, grade fever everything disappeared i had not taken any uh, medicine nothing i had taken just i affirmed for all those hours since morning that everything is my uh, wish uh, is my well wisher like so i just wanted to add this uh, someone uh, asked now no that uh, whether the fungi and the viruses are also uh, friendly with us so this was my experience that even if we visualize or if even if we affirm that the covid or the omicron uh, virus is our well wishers we are not harmed by them yes thank you thank you yaruti ma'am thank you for your experience yeah See, everything is relative in a way, you know, <laughs> like poison is needed to remove poison, right? <laughs> so nothing is static, it's all relative terms. So terminology you can use according to the situation, what you are talking about, right? <laughs> there is no permanent enemy, there is no permanent friend <laughs> in all aspects, <laughs> whether it is people or... Uh, ourselves because all cells are beautiful <laughs> beings there atom level <laughs> micro level you know they have their own intelligence we say right intelligence inside means what every cell has intelligence so it knows <laughs> how to so how you behave in any society same thing <laughs> inside it happens right good <laughs> yeah the masters any more sharings love to hear your yeah that is what jagriti said to us you know from genetics to epigenetics she proved it now <laughs> right <laughs> simple way <laughs> yeah srinivas muthi sir can you unmute yourself yeah please please go ahead sir yes so we can't hear you okay okay yeah, yeah it's already 10:15 yeah we don't see any other hand raises and uh, we would like to close the session for tonight and masters and uh, as i am posting all the okay we'll take the last question uh, krishna dasan sir good evening to everybody uh, we have no words to express our gratitude to lovely mom and uh, uh, spiritual tablets uh, that much uh, new wisdom that much new knowledge has been showered upon us yeah thank you thank you very much thank you thank you madam thank you thank you thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Krishna Srinivas Muthi, sir, can you unmute yourself? You have another uh, where you're raised. Hello? Yep, we can hear you, sir. Yeah, I'm audible now. Yeah, there yeah. is some yeah. challenge in no. my devices. That is why I'm sorry. Yes, sir, no problem. Uh, yeah, I just wanted uh, some help in the sense uh, there is a, you said that there is a Uh, the definition of health mm -hmm. okay so then what is the definition of uh, wellness <laughs> you it's, ah. these are i think synonym words you can see yeah. because english brings lot of these yeah. words yeah i'll have a few minutes more no acha yeah eh yeah we yeah nalla sadhana advikarundu sen nerthe yeah appo naane kondala amiki varunna chen nan chudikana nanu chen appadi nokkumbe i think we have to unmute pinna vaashan kekana nikku kaichina adu kandu okay okay ma that's fine uh um, once do we have anything to say um
Okay. Is uh, Srinivas Murthy's question answered or? No, sir. Uh, uh, in the middle, he has been talking to somebody else and he is could not able to mute. No, he, he, is, he was not talking, it was someone else. Yeah, that's fine. So, Srinivas Murthy ji, uh, your question again? Sir, I think it was understanding about health and wellness. What is the difference? Actually, lack of uh, whatever uh, Rahul is said, the peace of mind is wellness. Peace of mind contributed by your physical, emotional, as well as your social. Those three components, if they are in balance, like we say in spiritual tablets, we are a unit of energy, consciousness, and Rowley, can you fill the blank? I just forgot. Wisdom. 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 Right? So, keeping these three in a perfect balance is what wellness is. It's I will go simple. a one step forward, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> See, here the definition WHO, what <laughs> it is, sir, is feeling of well being at physical, mental, and social level. You have to add one more dimension, spiritual level. Spiritual. Then it is wellness. Otherwise, sir, really but, wellness uh, but right? actually, the combination of these three is spiritual. Yes, but yeah. that is the important no, That's a good aspect, point, actually. actually. Yes. Right. yes. <laughs> feeling of well being at physical, mental, emotional, social, and spiritual level. Then, no, that is what she has. Happened. Yeah, that is what exactly what she Ravali has shown on the slide. Yeah. On the left yes. side is this uh, 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 triangle is the three, and the left, right side is the four. That what it has. Yeah. yeah. But and then the three one... also in the debates, actually, this aspect has been taken into account. The definition is still old. I don't know whether they changed. I was told even that it changed, but I don't find in websites and all that. I just checked. No, it's not yet updated. Sir. Yeah. It is okay. not yet updated. It has not been updated. Yeah, but spiritual much. also included in the talks there, actually. <laughs> That's what some yeah. I have one more question. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Yes, sir, we can hear, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Hippocrates uh, said that uh, uh, let uh, food be thy medicine, and not thy medicine, not the food be uh, medicine like, correct? So food nowadays- is thy medicine, medicine is thy food. No, yeah, thy food. so then now uh, there are a lot of changes in the last 30 years, the food, uh, you know, what we are consuming and lack of uh, protein, vitamins, minerals, essential fat, on the other hand, the lifestyle child and we're consuming a lot of sugary item and you know, carbohydrate, rich in carbohydrate. And that is the uh, that is one of the reasons to get ill health. It could be diabetes, heart problems, or end up of cancer, stroke, you know, hypertension. So how do we correct this now? Okay, they we you know in the previous session, permission said that hitamita and all. Yes, if you start eating lesser than that, then you know the consume the intake of uh, proteins that is will proportionately come down. Uh, sir, I can talk from uh, practical experience. You mentioned diabetes. I have to go in search of my diabetes too. So what is it that did it? Right? Fundamentally, from the spiritual perspective, we talk about energy. I used to eat four times a day before I came into this meditative practices. Do you know, today I'm able to eat only once a day. And the irony or uh, you could say the dichotomy or the confusion, you can use any of these words, is that with that one-time food, I'm far more active than what I was with four-time food. So food here, food here, doesn't mean only what we eat. What we see is food, what we think is food, how we experience, what we breathe is food, and what we meditate also is food. So all of these contribute to food. One is in the direct form. So now when it comes to diabetes, what is diabetes if you look at 
that uh, picture that Ravali showed, she showed a mechanical device there. If I go the Newton's approach, that device means my pancreas is malfunctioning. Whereas if I look into myself from the spiritual perspective, then my diabetes is ill management of the combination of the energy, consciousness and wisdom. Energy is only one portion, which is the food. What I think, my thoughts, my stress levels is the impact on the consciousness. The lack of understanding or having wisdom contributes to both. That is, uh, when my wisdom is low, my ignorance is high. When my ignorance is high, my worries are more. Right? So there is a combination of these. If you balance these, then the resultant impact that it has on us is what I would personally, based on my experience, call health. So any imbalance that I bring about in these is going to result in impact. That's the way I would explain that uh, question or uh, respond to that question, sir. I don't know if it answers your question or not. One more addition. See, whatever we eat, whether it is medicine or food, how it is working, it is, as you said, you know, it is our energy. Have if our energy it? level is fine, we don't need more of a physical food at all. And the protein, what you talk about, everything is produced within us. Conversion is happening. So if all our organs, like a machine, carburetor has to work, other thing has to work, everything has to work if the car has to run. Like that, if everything is working, then production is there and proper distribution is there, proper elimination is there. So less of smoke in the car if the fuel is good. Same way in our body also. So everything is linked to energy. So not the quantity and quality. Quality is very important. Quantity, quality, one does the sufficient. One example is one Swamiji he is known as a yogi protoplasm. I think I talked earlier also. He just drinks a glass of milk per day. That's all. He's quite healthy. He's in 80s. Yes, older than me. And there is one Jasmuhin. She's from Australia. She's a spiritual master. She doesn't eat anything. She's a breatharian. She's not falling ill. How? So everything is inside only. Energy is there. Little bit needed depending upon our level of uh, you know, being here on this planet. How we are. So everything is energy which is within and without also. Where you live. Suppose you are always in the closed atmosphere. Then you feel more suffocated, go to nature. You get all the prana there. There is separate prana and water in air, in akasha, in uh, sun, like that. You stand in the sun for five minutes, you get energized, right? Particularly morning and evening. <laughs> so like that. And you take a bath, you feel energetic. And go to nice forest, good breeze. See how you feel. Go to a mountain. You see the fresh air, different air. How you feel. So everything you are taking the food in fact. Nature is giving you. So feeding. So we get energized. That's all. So the otherwise the people giving too much of importance to diet and calories. Throw the calorie. <laughs> That's all. You don't have to keep on measuring and all that. It's all only for experiments. I don't think with a due respect to all the nutrition specialists and uh, dietitian. Yes. Those who are sick, etc., maybe. But my understanding is absolutely live naturally. You see, you don't have to worry at all. No supplements are needed. I hardly take any supplement. I hardly eat even so much of food, even vegetables, etc. Et Whatever is their protein, fine. That's all. And right. One last point just to yes. add to you, sir. I was listening to Swami Sarva Priyananda. Yeah. Where he says that. Uh, pharmacist in one of his lectures tells him, sir, if I want to reproduce your liver using equipment, the least amount of space that I require is 500 acres. 
that is the power that is already built into our body in just one organ just extend that that is why they say the universe is inside us true and it's already packaged into a small unit your liver <sighs> your liver can do what a chemical factory outside we can in a space of 500 acres can do so we have to only take care of this body like uh, sahana that they explained 120 years if you have to live what you have to do it is all with respect to taking care of the body and it is not just by means of eating food and even think of elephant elephant and human beings can live 120 years elephant eat just grass how strong and healthy <laughs> and liver as you said yes uh, probably one day dr <laughs> ravali can explain about the functioning of liver also in the next time <laughs> see how wonderful liver is doing so much work as uh, he <laughs> rightly said everything is within <laughs> That's all. Right. <laughs> And Ravali, great job. Thanks to you also, sir. <laughs> Because I wanted this to end with a, a comment saying you did a wonderful job. It is not. See, we may give you ideas, Ravali. That's nothing. The talent lies in presenting it. such that everyone follows and that's your uh, fault you did a wonderful job thanks so yeah to adding to what chandra sir and parameshwaran sir said i think uh, food is one of the aspect and i feel a human body is capable of producing whatever proteins whatever energy is required it is a protein making machine our human body you should understand that and uh, the other thing is that it has this ability to produce that negative feedback to excess cholesterol also it has this beautiful biochemical reaction that's in, that runs in your body whenever it detects that the cholesterol level is high it will automatically switch it off that is a beautiful biochemical reaction that happens in our body all these things are going out of the place just because we are not taking care of body not in terms of food also but at the level of thoughts and emotions so all this comprise to creating that hay walk because we see a lot of this um, hollywood stars and bollywood stars who have got access to the best food the best dietitian and still they land up having cancer and everything so we need to also understand in that perspective and it is also our <laughs> responsibility to take care of the environment that we are in that is also one important thing because of whatever the negative uh, what uh, aspect that we was given to us in terms of that health is only you know you take couple of medications and you are set right no but we need to take care of environment also that is a huge responsibility for us also and we also need to work in that aspect also because everything eventually boils down to our health we get everything uh, if there is an imbalance around then we eventually will get affected because we are living in an ecosystem that's why i said we should start start calling us not like i but we should start calling ourselves as we yeah Uh, thank you very much thank you very much for a wonderful session actually and uh, i personally like the picture where you put together like you know this is what we are from the quantum level and uh, this is what we think we are you know in the stages like elemental and uh, organs wise and the whole system that gives a good uh, you know um, uh, like a, sometimes you just forget things but yeah uh, in, picture picture wise it it could hit you you know even in your deepest meditation it could just pull you up and uh, something else it hit my uh, hit within me uh, i know a lot of us are trying to do some kind of an fasting or you know eat little or something one uh, one thing i found personally was very helpful to me was cmos uh, it's available in us and uh, personally that that always gives me a good boost in the morning actually to start to start my day if anybody is interested you know, <laughs> give it a shot <laughs> and thank you very much and it was a great session and it's always 
good to hear you all uh, all you guys share and you know just uh, somewhere i might have read a lot of these things in the books or uh, practiced in a certain period of my time uh, in the past but it's always good uh, reminiscement in within myself thank you very much it's uh, purely grace i would say <laughs> thank you thank you thank you bakshi thank you So we'll meet again tomorrow. Okay. Thank you so much for all your participation and everything sharing. Thank you.